and welcome to Cloud Stories, a podcast exploring the ecosystem. Um, today, I'm very lucky and excited to have Sabi Gill uh, join me on the podcast. Sabi Gill was appointed as Chief Executive at DEX in October 2022. He has more than 35 years' experience in the tech sector, spanning sales, operations, development, support, and customer service. He's spent his career supporting businesses of all sizes with technology that looks to unlock their potential, both at home and and in international markets, including the Netherlands and Dubai. So prior to joining DEX, Sabi was CEO of Thomas International, a leading talent assessment and psychometric provider. Um, And prior to that, he was at SAGE and held senior leadership, um, executive leadership positions at... Uh, Oracle, PeopleSoft, um, and, and other digital companies. So, Sabi, welcome to Cloud Stories Podcast and welcome to beautiful Australia. Is this your first visit? No, Heather, this has been um, a, a, a superb journey where I've had the opportunity to come to uh, all those roles that you mentioned previously um, has allowed me to come and enjoy your beautiful country um, and it's great to be back. Yeah, it is a beautiful country, so so welcome. So you joined DEX two months ago. What attracted you um, about joining the DEX empire? Yeah, look, um, I'm. you mentioned earlier in the introduction, you know, I'm very familiar with the space. Having worked at Sage for two years as the managing director for the UK and Ireland business, and, you know, Sage is only one of two companies on the entire FTSE 100. So very prominent, been around for 41 years, um, you know, over you know, 600,000 clients in the UK alone. Um, so a, a very large business um, of which um, Dex was a strong partner. Um, and so I was very familiar with the space, very familiar with the accounting, the accounting practices, bookkeepers environment. I ran the accounting um, and the accountants division for uh, for Sage, so very familiar with that. Um, so when I had the opportunity to come and join Dex, having known the space and understanding the product set that we had, I think one of the the opportunities is um, when you look at the total addressable market, just on exactly the value, the effectiveness, the efficiency that a product like Dex can bring to a practice or a bookkeeper. Um, I look at that and say how underpenetrated it is, right? Mm -hmm. If you look at, I think one of the surveys that we did, which we commissioned uh, actually here in in, um, Australia, around 500 accountants and bookkeepers, and you ask them about what top three challenges that they face in their day-to-day work, um, you know, 51% listed personal stress or anxiety from client engagements or other work-related factors as one of their top three challenges. They also mentioned implementing new technologies, including change management and spending too much time on tasks that could be handled by technology. So we're already seeing from surveys that accountants are recognizing how much technology can potentially improve the effectiveness efficiencies of their everyday lives in relation to the, the challenges that they face and for me, that's a huge opportunity. Um, and, you know, speaking to some of, um, you know, the team and some of the, the accountants and practices here in um, in Sydney during my recent visit. And, you know, one of the things that we were talking about was um, the importance of skill shortage, right? And skills specifically around accountancy and accounting practices the number of qualified accountants that are coming through, you know, the the profession is greatly being reduced, right? Not as many people are coming through and there's potentially a skill shortage. You think about that and you say, well, okay, how do we at least ensure that those people that are coming through can be efficient and effective in the job that they do and take away some of the, the other processes and what can we automate and how do you use technology like you know artificial intelligence, machine learning, automation, extraction? And that's very much what we do at DEX. So we think there's a huge opportunity, and I think there's a real opportunity 
of adopting technology to make some of those potential technology changes that will help bookkeepers and practices in the future. Mm, absolutely. So I think um, the, the challenges of the last two years have probably seen sm- uh, small businesses who are going to get on online cloud accounting software get on it. So I, I don't see there being a great growth in that area in particular, and that's just based on my own thoughts, not on any empirical data. But I see the next frontier is, is bringing in um, these um, solutions such as DEX, the optical character recognition, and, and, and bringing in um, um, the uh, the functionalities that, that that DEX can do. So what do you hope to achieve with, with DEX and, and the, the, the various products it offers over the next, say, two years? Yeah, look, it's really about penetration, right? We, we have a big client base. We have some great relationships and partnerships globally. You know, one reason why I'm using the opportunity to be here is, you know, when you look at the number of extractions that we do and the number of integrations and interfaces, our largest integrated partner is actually zero, right? Which is an opportunity not only here in Australia, which has one of the largest footprints, it's also available on a global basis. So pretty much all the major focus countries, regions, territories, zero are looking at is also somewhere where we already operate. So for me, it's a case of what can we learn about the success that we've had in this region and how do I take that success and be able to move it to other territories around the world so that we can potentially benefit from the relationship that we already have with people like Zero, you know, into North America, into the UK, into other territories where we are you know, we're accelerating our growth, we're putting in a huge focus, and how can we help each other? You know, mm-hmm. when I look at, um, I'm doing a review with the team this morning, you know, when you look at the App Store, and you look at the presence that Dex has, you know, we are regarded as the number one with the most number of reviews at 4.7, you know, over 900 reviews, individuals and people and we are one of the strongest partners and I think again it's just how do we leverage that going forward yeah absolutely absolutely so let's talk about community you've worked alongside the accounting and bookkeeping community for many years um, and in your introductory letter to the community you said I'm obsessed with customer and employee engagement and I'm excited to meet many of the partners um, um, and businesses that Dex support so for me personally I have um, used receipt bank since almost day dot um, and have yeah. been a long-term term user, which is now Dex. But if I jump into any of the forums and mention Dex, there's a number of unhappy campers who will jump on posts. So yeah. what can the APAC region expect from Dex over the next two years and beyond? And what is your strategic focus on, of partnership within Dex and within the APAC region? Yeah, look, there's a, there's a number. Um, so when we think about the key focus areas for us at the moment um, from a product perspective is the future of e-invoicing in Australia, right, which we think is a huge opportunity. And we actually have a product that's coming out, um, an early version of the product, which we'll then make available to a number of partners and practices in January, right, mm-hmm. in the January, February timeframe. Um, There's things like uh, payroll checks, which I think will also be an important part uh, from a prepare perspective, ABN checking um, that we also need to be able to make sure that for small, especially for small businesses and for practices to be able to make sure that any um, organizations and suppliers they're dealing with are are, are legitimate organizations because cybersecurity and all of those things play a major part. So it's that control piece. Um, there's also the, you know, at least the window you sort of given me over a two year period, there's also other legislative changes and compliance changes that are happening, um, in other jurisdictions that could also help us here in Australia, right? So having the ability, when we think about in the UK, there's making tax digital in France, they are doing in 2024 e-invoicing and invoice creation. So all of those legislation changes and what's happening there will potentially have an impact on whatever solutions are coming out in other territories and regions. When you look at the closeness between 
the UK and Australia, which a lot of organizations do, whether you call it VAT, GST, you know, multi-currency, you think about language, you think about the Anglo-Saxon accounting models, the accounting principles are very much the same. And we have that ability with being HQ'd in the UK and having one of a, a very large prominent presence there, that a lot of that can be leveraged here in the local market. So that's really what we're going to be focusing on next couple of years is, you know, there's product feature functions that I mentioned, e-invoicing, and then really leverage as much as we can all of the compliance and regulatory that's happening in other territories and bringing that over here. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, it's interesting because the uh, the Commonwealth countries all seem to operate in a very similar way. But I think that uh, um, a, a solution like Dex and someone in, in your position, you have a, a great opportunity to see what the different regions and the different um, countries are doing and um, um, advise back and try and uh, offer people the best option there. So I see that you serve on a, a number of boards pushing digital adoption. So I was really impressed by that. I try and uh, serve in my area where I can to serve um, and uh, provide advice like that. Um, so you've recently become the chair of the Digital Leaders Advisory Board, um, a community of over 180,000 professionals working to eliminate the issues that hold back UK digital transformation. So what are you um, hoping to achieve in that role and how can UK people get involved? Um, and have you got them all using Dext yet? <laughs> Not yet, but it's, a, it, it's on my to-do list. Um, but no, look, you know, the great thing about digital leaders is this is a community of individuals rather than organisations. Mm. So, you know, what can an individual person do on their own? Not much, but when they've got 180,000 people behind them who can provide advice, support, give them, um, you know, their experiences of how they've been through digital transformation and digital leadership in their particular organization. People move around organizations. So um, for us, there's a lot of learning about mistakes. And I'm a real true believer that, you know, have the courage to fail because the, what you learn from failure will benefit you greater than the successes that you've had. And having the individuals and people that you have a forum where you can post questions, um, you know, um, have working groups. We, on a fairly regular basis, you know, have forums that allow people on specific subjects. Literally a week ago, you know, I was at the House of Lords where we were uh, announcing the net zero 050 list. You know, the top organizations, whether they were individuals, initiatives or programs or products, um, which were helping around the decarb decarbonization strategy for 2050 um, for the UK. And again, it's things like that. that most people wouldn't have associated with digital. However, these were digital technologies, initiatives and programs that people were putting in place, which were there to try and speed up the ability for organizations to accelerate that decarbonization strategy. Mm. So for me, you would never be able to do that if you didn't have an organization that could really help you, support you, put you on a list, put you on a platform and give you that exposure where people can then make investments to help you along that journey. Yeah, absolutely. And you learn from being around each other and and, and learning from each other. You've mentioned yep. a few times, sorry to cut you off. Um, you've mentioned okay. a few times the net zero and the sustainability. And I know that um, adopting um, Receipt Bank was one of the first things that gave me a paperless office. And you can see my office behind me. <laughs> it's fun. There's no paper happening in my office. And it, it, it does my head in that a decade later, people are still struggling to 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 adopt paperless office in terms of the sustainability in terms of fires and flooding you know if, if you can bring it all into the cloud um, um you are in a much better position for that what are your thoughts on um businesses embracing sustainability and sort of what are some small things that you're doing in that regard yeah look um we all know that the um there's been a massive paradigm shift right in relation to firstly adoption of technology right i think even here in australia the work that the tax authorities are doing and having actually a, a a digital strategy in place to be able to accelerate and make you know 
tax online and um, almost getting a, a tax efficient structure in place um, is absolutely imperative, right? Because that does do everything that you've talked about. The quicker, the, the quicker you can get organizations to process information and data and receipts and invoices is crucial to a small business. And that's really what we we have to think about is when you think about small businesses, what's the number one reason why businesses go fail? Mm. It's because of insight into cash flow, right? They've got all they've got invoices going out, they've got invoices coming in, they've got payments going out, they've got to pay people. They don't necessarily always have that insight into what's going out, when it's coming in, do I need a bridge loan? Do I need to be able to have money in the bank? Do I need an overdraft facility? All of those different components. And the more you can automate that within a business, that automatically gets to the paperless office. It automatically gets to the ability for small businesses to actually stay alive. Mm -hmm. um, they allow people to be able to you know, hire more people. So it's a massive ecosystem which automatically reduces the dependency that they have on on government that they have on departments and that in itself means that the more people you keep in the workforce the higher degree there is around sustainability of individuals people and all of the components that go into running a small business so for me it's about let's make sure that we can we can keep businesses afloat we can keep individuals and organizations in in work and that, to me, is a bigger element of sustainability for businesses than it would be if we just allowed businesses to fail. Yeah, absolutely. And and, and I attended the London ZeroCon in July and through the challenging economic situation and there was no um, prime minister in at the time I attended <laughs> and it was the hottest day on record and the trains weren't working, I was in that room going, the accountants and bookkeepers are going to save the economy. You've got the power. You've got the tools. You're going to save it. And that's kind of aligning very much with what, what you're saying there. So I have deep hope for, um, 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 I have deep belief in the power of our accountants and bookkeeping community globally. Um, and, uh, um, and, and and you're going to, I imagine, see this with your travels with Dex, that, that yes. you know, given the tools, they'll save us. They will save Correct. us. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm very passionate about that. <laughs> so, I'm joining the movement, Heather. Don't worry. Yes. <laughs> good. Very good. Very good. So um, have you ever been involved in a company that's undergone such a, um, a drastic brand change name that Dex has gone through? So as you can tell, I'm, I'm interviewing you and I'm having yeah. a hard time even remembering Dex and I keep <laughs> flipping back to Receipt Bank. And I had to actually go on to the, I, I use it daily, but I had to go onto the website to find out what the current name is. And it's Dex Prepare. That is what yep. this Receipt Bank is, has, is now called. Have you been with a company that's gone such a, 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 such through a drastic change that, that, that the community is still not upset about, but just struggling to keep, keep up with? Yeah, no, look, to be honest, um, I would say it was when I was at Oracle. Um, you know, Oracle was made up of lots of acquisitions, right? They bought PeopleSoft, they bought Hyperion, I think they bought, um, I've even forgotten the name of the product. It was, you know, it's another CRM product. They, they bought all these multiple products, started changing the name, and actually they went back to changing them. Um, and, you know, when I think about what Dex has been through, you know, yes, it was Receipt Bank and we called it Prepare. We bought another product called Xavier and called it Precision. We bought another product called Greenback and called it Commerce. Um, you know, when we went through that rebranding exercise, um, I think the company needed that new identity. But I think, you know, in full transparency, we could have done a far better job of just making sure that that transformation and that transition to the new name and ensuring that we had some element of continuity and we shared what the new branding meant and what the new products were, um, I think we could have done a far better job in that, right? And I think that we'll be the first ones at Dex to, to show that. And I think there's still some work to be done. That job is not done around our rebranding. I think we've got to continue, you know, educating individuals and people and make sure people remember um, what Receipt Bank was there for, what our values were, what our 
culture to an extent, right? With you know, the largest portion of our revenue still comes from that product. And we've got to make sure that we have that continuation. And people don't forget that we that we were a receipt bank to an extent, right? In our in whatever transformation, whatever journey you tend to show people the you've the, the evolution that the business has been through, our roots were receipt bank. Mm. Right. And we shouldn't sometimes forget what where the roots were and those sort of things. So we will um continue on that journey. We will continue to educate. You know, the change has been made now, so it's no it's not as if we're ever going to go back to what we were, but I think it's a, just a huge opportunity to just ensure that we stay focused, we look at um what else we can do and just make sure that everybody understands what DEX is and what it was, mm. and then really talk about, you know, how do we take that forward rather than worry about you know historically all of the challenges that you know that rebranding caused yes absolutely and i think the thing is uh many of the people still here um love michael love sophie love receipt bank and it's it's community and 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 they they they're embracing it for the value and the culture etc Yeah, and I had the opportunity, you know, uh, literally within the first couple of weeks of joining, of actually spending time time with Michael, right, Wonderful. and going back and having that, you know, conversation with him and asking him about the history and, you know, everything that we, the journey that we'd been through and the journey that he'd been through, um, and it was just great to make sure that, you know, as a new CEO coming in, you know, I need to understand the heritage of the organisation and the original founders and what were their thoughts. And what were they thinking so that when I think about our future, that I don't forget about that, right? Because that's very much, you know, we've got all individuals and people who've been with the organization, whether through people like yourself who've used it since year dot, as well as our own employees. You know, I met employee number one the other day when I was in Bulgaria. And it's great that, you know, we still kept on to individuals like that. Mm. But we, and we shouldn't forget the history, because if you do, then I think, Personally, that's that's the wrong thing to do. Mm, yeah, you and I think everyone recognizes that you need different people to lead it. People have different skills, and uh, um, and they'll go off. It's just <laughs> it's the story and and the history and the legacy of there. So um, right. and uh, I mean and and being technology, it's important to remember that there are humans, um, humans paying mortgages behind these solutions. So, um, yeah. so. Um, thank you so much for joining me today, Sabi. Is there anything else you'd like to share with our listeners and how can they um, get in touch with you? Yeah, look, via normal routes, you can come through our website, you can get, come through the LinkedIn. Um, Heather's got my details, so please reach out to her as well. Um, no, look, the only thing I'd, I'd like to leave you with is just under the, the importance of the community, right? The importance of the accountant, the bookkeeper community, that's something for me that we as an organization will never forget, right? Um, Another reason why I'm here is we we are restarting the partner uh, advocacy events that we had, right? We'll continue the sponsorship of all the key events, whether that's ABE, ZeroCon, Accountex, over the next year. We're we're really focused on events, you know, with partners, right? First-class accounts, gyms, whatever the organizations are. Um, you know, over the next three months, we've got road shows coming up, that literally all over Australia. But the idea is that we want to get out to individuals, people, local communities, and just make sure they understand the importance that we put on individuals. We will never, ever take relationships for granted. Um, and, you know, the, you mentioned earlier around the importance of, you know, at the end of the day, we're a software company. You know, our, we talk about IP, right, intellectual property. People always point intellectual property as being the software itself. To me, it's not the software. The software is an outcome. It's all the individuals, people, right? All the employees that I have, all the partners, the bookkeepers, the accountants, they're the most important part. And I will never um, apologize for the fact when I'll turn around to customers and say, just so you know, you're not the most important people in the equation. It's actually every single employee and Dext employee, because I know if I provide an environment and a culture where they absolutely love to come into the office and enjoy what they do, that will be infectious to every single customer, partner, bookkeeper that exists out there. And then they will get that 
same experience. And for me, that's the most important thing. Um, and just know that I'm committed to making sure that that happens. So your IP is your relationships. Absolutely. Whether <laughs> that's employees or external. But yes, Absolutely. you nailed it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sabi, for taking the time to uh, speak with me and the, the Cloud Stories podcast audience. Really appreciate it. Great. Thanks, Heather. Really enjoyed it. Thank you very much. I hope you liked listening to that interview with Sabi Gill, CEO of Dext. From here, I suggest you join the Zero Mastermind group on Facebook for advanced conversations around the ecosystem. Subscribe to the informative Accounting Apps newsletter, which gives you a great overview of the ecosystem space. Um, It's available at heathersmithau.com. I encourage you to connect with me on LinkedIn and subscribe to the Cloud Stories podcast too. I'm Heather Smith and you've been listening to the Cloud Stories podcast.